What's up, guys? I'm Dwayne. I'm Alicia. And we are Black Board Gaming, where we teach you about all these great board games that are out there. Waiting to be played by you and yours. I'm a simple I recently introduced my wife Alicia to a game that I listed in my top five board games that make me think about summer. And that game is called Dive. Dive was designed by Romain Caterjean and Anthony Peron and published by Sit Down Games. Let's go to the table for an overview of how this game is played. Dive is a push your luck racing game for one to four players, where the players are trying to be the first to reach the sacred stone. To set up the game, we're gonna take this stack of transparent ocean tiles and give them a really good shuffle. And while we're shuffling them, flip them around, turn them 80 degrees, you know, some of them like that. Then, once we've given that a good shuffle, we're gonna place it into this stand and then place the stand in the middle of the table in reach of all players where all players are able to look down into these ocean tiles. Then we're going to take this descent board and place it right next to it. Each player is going to get one of these player shields which they will place in front of them. They're going to get a diver board, these air tokens number one through five, and they're gonna get one of these little diver meeples and they're gonna place this on the zero spot of the descent board. And they're gonna get a seashell token that matches the color of their diver meeple and they're gonna place it in front of their shield to remind everybody which color they're playing as. So this is how the game will look set up for two players. But for the sake of the viewers, I'm gonna remove these shields out the way. So, the object of the game is the players are racing down this descent board to be the first to get to the sacred stone that the elder had thrown into the ocean. And the sacred stone is at the 23 spot on his descent board. So when a player's diver meeple reaches or passes that spot, then that will trigger the end of the game and whoever made it the farthest down this track will be declared the winner. So how do we play the game? Well, the game lasts over several rounds, and each round, the players are going to have these shields in front of them, and then they're going to program their diver board based on what they can see in these, this stack of ocean tiles looking straight down. And what they're looking for is sharks to avoid and sea turtles and manta rays that can help them in their uh, journey to get the sacred stone. So how do you program your diver board? Where each player is gonna have these air tokens and they're number one through five, but that has nothing to do with the number of depths that they can travel. So on each round, a player can travel up to five depths per round. But if you stack them, you can go four and three because you wanna try to get a higher value. And I'll explain that in a minute. So let's do a sample round. Let's say this player decides to put this four here, this one here. Then he takes this shark, put this token on the shark side. And that means at level three, he believes there's a shark down there. He does that for level four, and he decides to go all five. So he, he's just going to go that like that. That's how he's going to program his diver board. This player over here, programs it like this, he's gonna do this, put that there, then he's gonna place that one there. He doesn't believe that there's a shark on level, the, uh, the third depth of the ocean, but he believes there's one at level five. He also thinks that there's something, uh, one, a sea turtle or something, so he decides to double up on that. So this player is just going a total of four levels in the ocean. This player is going five. Once everybody has programmed their diver board, 
Then we would remove these shields out the way, and then everybody could see everybody else's diver board. And then we would start moving down the ocean. So the game comes with this cardboard whiteboard, which helps the players able to see what's on these transparent ocean tiles without any colors from the table or whatever messing everything up. So let's say they look at this first one. No sharks, but there's a really nice majestic whale there. So this player said there were no sharks. This player did the same thing. So they were able to go past the first depth of the ocean. We remove that. We pull up the next time. No sharks. This player got it right. This player got it right. But here's a sea turtle. Now here's where the number values come into play. So this player has a value of one. This player has a value of four. Since this player has the higher value, he gets to use the sea turtle. And what the green sea turtle does, it is advance his um, diver meeple one space. So he's going to move right there. We move that one. We're going to look at the next tile. Now, this is when he said he believes there's a shark there. This player doesn't believe there's a shark there. Uh oh, shark. So, what happens? This player, he failed, couldn't avoid the shark. This comes to off to the side. And his round is over. He made it two levels. This guy, he saw the shark. He, he succeeded in avoiding the shark, so he gets to keep going. So we remove this tile, take the next one, pow, shark. Oh, he got that one right. The other thing he got right, there was a red turtle. Remember, he thought that there, saw, thought he saw a red turtle, so he stacked up here because he wanted the, the value to use that red turtle. But he didn't make it down that far. This player made it that far since he's the only one. He's able to use that red turtle. And what the red turtle does is he advances his diver meeple two spaces. So he's going to go one, two. Then we remove that one. He's going to the fifth level. Let's pull it out. Uh-oh, shark. So he failed. He moves this off to the side. And so now that round, the round will be over. Now, as you can see, there's a manta ray here. So if a player is able to get, uh, get the uh, manta ray's assistance, what the manta ray does is it helps you catch up to the player that's directly in front of you. So if in a, let's say it was a four player game, you were in last place, the manta ray will help you catch up to the person that's third um, in third place. Only thing, if you're in first place, Manta Ray does nothing for you because there's nobody in front of you. So we remove this. Then we take this whiteboard out the way for the moment. Everybody decides like, oh, I'm sorry, forgot. So he made it two levels. Remember, third level, he missed the shark. So he gets to advance one, two. This player made it four levels. So he gets to advance one, two, three, four. And then that will be the end of the round. And then we would put the shields back in front of us and start the next round and do the exact same thing over again. So let's say this is the state of the descent board later on in the game. As you can see, the descent board is divided into two sections. From 0 to 15, that's considered tranquil water. From 16 on up, though, that's considered dark water, which it means it's more dangerous. Once a player's diver meeple enters dark water, then the game changes for him. So if you remember, if you ever you got a space wrong, you lose everything down here, but you still was able to travel two levels. In dark water, though, if you get it wrong, not only do you lose all of this, but you lose these two. So you pretty much tank that round so once you get into dark water you got to make sure you're on point on figuring out whether or not sharks are on certain levels another thing is let's say this player was able to get the assistance of a manta ray 
usually a manta ray takes you to the player that's right ahead of you. But since this player is in dark water, this player will only get to here for right now. Now, once he enters dark water, manta rays work as usual. But for right now, that's as far as he's gonna go. So let's say later on, this diver gets here, this diver gets here, which has triggered the end of the game. And since this diver has gotten the farthest, this player will be declared the winner of dive. So let's not waste any time. What did you think about the theme of this game? Honestly, the theme is quite unique. I really thought the theme was clever and unique. So that 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 was appealing. Yeah, this get this theme is refreshing. It just stood out from the rest of the pack. You know, you're just diving out into the ocean, you know. And I, I love the theme of this game. That's actually, what drew, drew, drew me to it. Actually, refreshing is a great word. Yeah. So what did you think about the components? Well, I really love the layer, the the layer ocean cards, the translucent <laughs> ocean cards. So I really like those. And I like the chunkiness of the pieces where you do your programming the air tokens the air tokens but um you do like them chunky bit bits. i like chunky <laughs> now honestly our markers that as we our event, diver meeples our diver meeples they looked odd to me out why they look like they were swimming like okay you know they swimming okay i didn't see that i saw it and they okay. like swimming you so, know <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to look at them again they they look like a curious sea creature to me so okay <laughs> i mean i agree with you about the uh the transparent ocean tiles because it did you felt like you know with them being stacked you felt like you was looking down into the ocean so that, that I love that part. The aesthetics of this game are amazing to me. You know, so what do you think about the art? So I really the art for me made the game. Yeah. The um the trance. So I really thought they did a wonderful job of giving you the sense of looking down into the depths of the ocean very beautiful very visually appealing very well done so that art really evokes that sense yeah. of diving into the ocean so that was very well done yeah i really love the art i love the the you know you got the sharks and the sea turtles and the manta rays but also you got you know the majestic whale and you got the elusive squids and octopus and schools of fish and seaweed i love the fact that they added all that stuff into the uh on these tiles you know and i love the art the art on the box like on the front of the box it just got the name yes the front of the box box is beautiful and yes the level of detail is just yeah is exquisite. Yeah, the art I, I is, like that. The art is exquisite. So, what do you think about the mechanics of this game? So, honestly, push your luck is not my favorite mechanic. Yeah, and programming. I think this is the first time you got yeah introduced to programming. Maybe you know? honestly. I believe that these mechanics work perfectly for this game. Yeah, it, it does. It really does. You yeah. know, I like I said, I'm not a big fan of push your luck because usually my luck doesn't always fare well for me. But this is a game that I don't even mind losing. It's just the experience, you know. Like I said, we played this with uh, Elijah. You, you, know. you played well, it. Well, I played it with Elijah. She, you know, I played it with Elijah, and we had a ball, and we played it with our son-in-law, his dad. And then you played it. And then I played it. Yeah, me. Okay. Then I played it with my board game group. And like I said, we're used to heavier games, but we were having a ball uh, sitting there trying to, like, I think that's a shark. Oh, uh, nope. I got it wrong. Oh, wait, no. I got that turtle. Okay. that It was fun. We We had a ball. So, what do you think about the teach? So, um, 
Okay, so when I was trying to learn this game, the one thing that was confusing and a tad bit frustrating yeah. was the one to five concept because it took me a minute to not, because at first I thought the one to five represented the, the depth that you were going down. Yeah. And it doesn't. It has nothing to do with. <laughs> and that I know the word. I know the book says it. I know you said it four times. Right. But still, it, it just didn't, didn't register. No. But. And, <laughs> and so when I when I bet when I programmed like that, and it I, that was frustrating. But once I understood that really the numbers represent how sure you are yeah then once i got over that hiccup it is it, it's a pretty straightforward easy game to teach and to learn yeah she she kept putting one two three four five <laughs> in the one two three four five space and then wondered why i was getting the red turtle i'm like no that did disconnect that those one two three four five to this one two three four five and but I had to let you know you weren't the first one that had that problem. I had that issue when I was learning the game, and then when I taught it, you know, and it just that hiccup. Once you get past that hiccup, I don't know what they could have done to fix that. Maybe make it where you go down four depths or whatever, but it evens out. Yeah. All right. So overall, what did you think of Dive? So overall, Dive is a unique family weight game. I think it's a clever concept. I think it's charming. And um, I think this is a game that families would enjoy. Yeah, once once they get past that hiccup, you know, they would definitely enjoy this game. Now, there is where you can remove, like, make it where they don't have the kids, the younger kids, don't have to worry about the turtles and the um, manta rays. You just play it straight up. So that way they're not trying to, they're just... Focusing on the sharks. Mm, I don't, you know what? I think that will make it less interesting. Well, I get it. I understand, though. <laughs> because that's I mean, part of the charm. The yeah. variety of life that's depicted. Um, so, yeah, I really think that this is a well-done game. And I think it's a game that will be a great entree into this hobby. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I believe that this, I can see myself introducing to this game to a lot of people who are new to board gaming. Yes. So yeah. that's our feelings of Dive. So if you like the contents of this video, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And like we said, Dive is a keeper for us. I'm Dwayne. I'm Alicia. We are Blackboard Gaming. We will see you next time.